What up my dudes, it's your boy Gil the Severely Depressed Fur Fag, bringing you guys an experimental cancer's video. I got off my fat ass to do so for once in my fucking lifeless life. So a while ago, while I was on the internet watching videos to entertain me away from the verge of crying internally, I saw the moment of what the prophecies had foreseen. But not just any moment. The moment. The moment. The moment. The moment. So, meet Foxler, a gay-ass fox with a gay-ass tie and a gay-ass sports armband with a paw print on it. And again, you might be wondering, what's wrong with the paw print? Well, that's an easy case. The paw print is the main symbol for the furry raiders, which I myself am a part of. The only thing we raid is each other's dick. The main thing that the raiders are is a group of fur fag friends dodging all the drama that some asswipes would love to bash for a couple of pennies. And the funniest part is, the bashing has gotten so much the point of determination, such as Kiwi Farms, of which the cesspool is by its own means. Now we move on to the side of the coin, also known as the dark side. So the main point of this video lies in the darker realm of this video. Meet Dogpatch Press, an independent alternative media for a journalist who is not only gay as fuck, but also a democrat. So now that we know the two main characters of the story, something quite special has happened between Dogpatch and the special entity that has invaded this realm of existence to bash onto Foxler. And this special entity is no more, no less, than the myth, the legend, the Huffington Post. And so you might be wondering, why does the Huffington Post went out of their way to side with a bunch of fur fags? Does the mainstream media hate the alternative media? What do they find so interesting in losers, like all furries are, including me by the way? And what, and that's what we're gonna find out with quality furry detective work. <laughs> Recently, Foxler has uploaded a video debunking this in his own video, so I thought it'd be a good, uh, good opportunity to try something new, and an opportunity to create some dank-ass memes, boy. Please, senpai. Not the smith, senpai. Not the smith. So without any more faggotry, we now summon the memes. What's up, my favorite fluffies out there? Oh my god, I'm a fluffy. I'm a fluffy. I'm making a video response to an article done in the Huffington Post by Priscilla. From what I looked up, this Priscilla from the Huffington Post is a journalist that focuses more on arts and culture. That is, if I think I might, it might be the right journalist to. Uh, she asked me some questions uh, about the, the article and some of the things that were in it. Right, so you were interviewed on a few things. Did you uh, at least get paid? And I just want to make a little video response about it. And that's where we are. Yeah. The first one is, and it was a t it was regarding the tweet from Dog Patch Press. Mmm, dog shit press. I mean, Dog Patch Press. You know for sure it's gonna be a good one when you hear dog fucker. I mean, Dog Patch Press. And the quote line goes. It wouldn't be surprised if there's a short distance between Putin and Foxer. Whoa, 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 whoa! Putin, the Russian president, and Foxler. Well, <laughs> congratulations! You are sent to memehood. We think. You know, I find this really funny. Um, and I think the reason why Dog Patch Press made this comment. Well, it's Dog Bitch. I mean, Dog Patch. You can't, you can't expect much from a fella like that, eh? Because, uh, when I was looking for artists to commission work for the group and myself, you know, a lot of the, um, American-based and some of the European-based furry artists wouldn't take my commissions, because, you know, I'm not very liked. You know, this is one of the reasons why I joined the Furry Raiders. I know for a fact I am a piece of shit. And I'm also hate as well too, so you know. But then again, that doesn't mean any American or European isn't gonna take your missions. Some, I guarantee you, they would love to do so. You just gotta dig through shit to find gold, you know. Totally fine. You know, you don't want my money, that's great. I'll find somebody else who'll take my money. I find it weird that some people would reject money like that, regardless of the customer, because to me that might just be some form of discrimination. But then again, 
fuck them. Just because that few doesn't have reject your money, there are hundreds more to do free business. And I ended up finding a whole bunch of Russian furs that were willing to take my money. Of course the Russian furs would. Especially with the fact that the current Western Democrats are very keen to discriminate Russians on all levels. And then again, any Russian artist is very talented. I can assure you that. And that's, I started a co-relationship with them and they did lots of work for us. And I think that's where Dogpatch Press got that information from. See? I knew I was right. And tried to put it in his own narrative. Saying, hey, you know, this, this fox is somewhat related closely to Putin and some, you know, conspiracy out there. And it, it's just... I believe. I believe. I believe. I know, Chicky Bricky of Donkey. How, how, how is a person living in Colorado have connections, close connections to to Russia and Putin in that level. That, that you know, that just boggles my mind. Hey now, you're a meme now? Get your yif y'all. <laughs> uh, as if scientifically proven the left can't meme, this proves they will do anything to push their agenda forward, no matter how ridiculous it is. At the end of the day, I just call that clickbait, you know? A uh, typical way of getting it, trying to get attention uh, and keep bringing up the subject of, you know, furry raiders and foxer like myself. Uh, like I said, bash us around for a few pennies. That's what they always do, isn't it? Pat Stress is known for doing that. He loves continuously bringing me up or bringing the raiders up so he can get more people focusing on his social media. What if I'm Dwama Alat Nation? I'm your host, Kiwa Creamstar. Let's get wide into the news. So, I think that's where that comes from. And, all overall, the second one was um, about what are my supposable hopes for the future of the alt furry movement. It really depends on what the, the person said because alt furry and furry raiders may seem similar but they're actually pretty different believe it or not. Well this is where I want to address something pretty simple but try to overlay the whole article as well um, Priscilla. Not, not, not saying that the article you know there's really anything wrong with it or, or, or I'm not really trying to judge it in any form but because I'm not a big news person, so I apologize for that part of not being, you know, engaging of that enough. But really the simple thing here is that furries is nothing but a fantasy world of anthropomorphic animals. Just like the game over here, it's all just a show we put on for fun. Because we have our own way for fantasy, which some can say has a few bits of lifestyle into it, you know? We just want to have fun, make friends, and so on. Even so, it may look like we're just taking it seriously to some extent. Not fully, just a healthy limit for fun, for fun, you know, for fuck's sake. <laughs> None of it is real. I, th this costume is only as real as I try to make it in my head. And that applies to all furries. Uh, and sometimes we indulge in this fantasy a lot. And because of that, some people take it more seriously than others, and it's very mixed. That's the reason why we have so many subgroups in it, and we have so many different opinions. And at the end of the day, I, I see it personally as we're just fluffy butts that are enjoying being different. Not to forget the fact that some who take it very seriously to the point that they actually make a living of it, also known as dog shit, I mean dog patch. And, and with that, I don't see the correlation that people want to put together. You know, one side says it's all toxic because of this side and that side. What the big problem is, is that nobody can agree on a standard. Nobody has a standard for the furry community. 
I guess you can say the first standard is be who you want to be, I guess. But as you can see, it too has, has its own conflicts. As far as we saw, furries bash other furries. Even for minor details, I mean, like, what would be the reward? Like, uh, art, uh, friends, attention, it's gotta be something. It is, it is, it's, it's up to the, the so-called player, or the person playing the persona, as me, to decide what to put into it. And because everybody can put something into it, it's gonna turn into this big mess, where everybody has a different opinion. So that would make furries seem something like, uh, fantasy characters come to life, to living plushies, and also video game characters come to life. We are so... we are such motherfucking losers. What the definition should be like and how it should be run. And that is where the conflict begins. Because everybody is a bit different. Well, that's human nature at its finest. For me personally, and what I pro uh, project onto the furry raiders is my group, is that everybody uh, there is we, we want to be welcoming to everybody we want to be able to everybody to express themselves you know expression without limits because if you're in a fantasy world anything can happen and kind of does a good you know there's parts of the furry fandom that are very sexual and there's really no limits in that sexual component and thus the furry stereotype all right and the same would go for other expressions you know, people may have political expression, people may have um, hobbies that they want to express part of their furry side. I mean, I kind of do that with myself. Ah, oh, that arm man is so offensive. Ah, oh, I'm so triggered. Ah. Oh. I'm, a, I'm a big car guy and I like to express my love for automobiles with furry as well. And, you know, if anybody asks what my political beliefs are, you know, I'm still sitting down on the apolitical spectrum. I don't really want to worry about politics. Well, I'll give him credit for that because it's, because nowadays it's basically impossible to avoid the toxic sludge of politics. I mean, for me, I just do it, you know, one, because of memes and because, hey, I guess you can say like it's a bit of self-torture and fun for it, but hey, at least I think to some extent I enjoy it, I guess. I don't know. So when somebody asks me how I feel about all furry or you know the future of it, all furry is actually a separate group. Told you the alt furry and the furry raiders they seem similar, but they're actually quite different. From the furry raiders and myself. And they have their own ideological path or mission, their own mission that they want to follow. And I'm not going to stop them from having their mission, because it doesn't affect me. In short, <clears throat> it really means that you can't control or even help everyone, including those that are rich, because, I mean, for personal experience, I can say that uh, it never worked out really well, and uh, why would you actually want to try that kind of stuff, right? I mean, we, we both know, being a foxler, know that uh, it, uh, it never worked out well, so hey. Uh, if someone wants to take a pee pee in the poo poo, that's their own choice, I guess. I don't feel that what they do affects me, so why should I get involved and put my foot in the door and say, no, you're doing it wrong or it needs to be done this way? Uh, my mission is to be myself, to be Foxer, and to support my group, the Furry Raiders, which has, you know, has its own mission goal of welcoming everybody and giving everybody's right to express themselves freely uh, in different levels. Oh, the shit posts, especially the shit posts. <laughs> That's what what I'm about, and um, you can see that because each group is slightly different, everybody rejects each other. So, furries who are the living incarnation of being diverse can reject others for not being diverse uh, in their own terms, huh? Well, uh, humans actually are not too different as well too in that case. Uh, you can see why the supposable real Nazi furs reject me, because I don't follow their specific guidelines, and you know, I'm not really part of alt-furry because they reject some of my ideas. 
So I, I have to build my own little niche of people that I can get along with. And thus, the free readers come into play, of which, uh, you know, like Fulter said, are a little niche of people he can trust. That's what I did. And because I supposedly wear this... <sighs> that arm pad, I'm so twiggered. <sighs> and people don't like it. It's part of my persona. It's a, it's a, it's, they judge, they judge myself and the people that I, that associate with me. And the funny part it is, they say don't judge others, yet they themselves judge others. Okay, so we can't judge anyone else, but they are the ones that, they, I mean, they are the only ones that can do it, huh? Yeah, I get it. And because of that association, we create the divide. They create the divide saying, come together while they push us apart. Okay, I get it. So at the end of the day, the the simple niche is that furries are not are nothing but just a, an escape. And taking it any more seriously, it's just asinine. <laughs> like you said, there is a charm in being a furry, although it's not the point where someone can exploit that to their own personal gain at the expense of others. Sure, making memes and shit posts is fun, but then again, you know, there's some limit to the fun. Because otherwise it would be abuse. I hope that you know covers a little bit of my position with some of your questions and kind of just get an idea of who I am as a person. Uh, so uh, thank you for taking your time on uh, doing the uh, article, Priscilla, and I really appreciate that uh, that I that some of my tweets are really featured in there. Uh, and so I hope you have a good rest of the evening. Talk to you later. And so the fox ends his speech, I hope at least to give him a boost along, the, along with a few edgy faggot ass memes. This is the first time I actually do a video like this. Let me know if you wish to see more along the way and who knows, maybe they might become better since I use Windows Movie Maker. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did, as I look forward for the next one. So I'll see you guys next time, and until then.